in the deranged summer of 2019. A small number of eBay employees formed a cult-like group that crawled out of a dark place of the corporate soul. Their methods were juvenile and grotesque, featuring cockroaches, barely veiled threats of violence and death, stalking, physical surveillance, and even the most spine-chilling use of the head of a pig. Let me explain. The Steiners have been married for more than 30 years and worked together from their home for more than 20 years. They publish a news website called E-Commerce Bites. David handles the business side of things and Ina does the reporting. They cover e-commerce industry news, what is happening and how it impacts sellers. They would get information by sellers writing to them with stories of their experiences with major online retailers. The Steiners saw themselves as a medium for sellers to share their problems, and the site was a way to give these sellers a public voice. The majority of their 600,000 readers were sellers on eBay, Amazon, Etsy, and it was also closely followed by e-commerce executives. In fact, the Steiners were regularly contacted by industry observers with questions. For instance, they had regular communication from Wall Street because these were public companies and it was the best way to get behind the scenes information that might move company stock prices. However, an email that appeared in their inbox on the morning of the 8th of August would change the course of their lives in such a bizarre and horrifying way that no one would believe it to be true were it not carefully documented by law enforcement and government officials. On August 8, the Steiners were bombarded with several sign-up messages to unusual newsletters. Newsletters, the Steiners never signed up for like Sin City Fetish Night the Satanic Temple, the Communist Party, and dozens more. Immediately after they noticed, someone started harassing them on Twitter through direct messages. The messages were a series of threats saying things like shut up or else, but this was only the start and many more messages were received with a lot more vulgarity. So vulgar repeating them would probably get this channel banned from YouTube. Three days later, the Steiners got a strange voicemail from a delivery company saying there was difficulty in delivering a wet specimen to their address. David's heart sank because it was clear that whoever was harassing them knew their home address. And it was at this point that he decided to involve the police for the first time. The police came to their house and took a report. After taking their report, the police officer stepped outside to leave and noticed a package on their porch. After much deliberation, he urged them to open it in his presence. Ina yelled and shrieked when David opened the package to reveal something that looked like flesh and hair covered in blood. After inspecting the specimen, they realized it was a pig mask from the horror movie Saw. This was the beginning of a type of terror and hellish existence that turned their lives into a real-life horror movie. Over the following days, someone sent them boxes of live cockroaches and spiders. Pornography was sent to their neighbors, but addressed to David Steiner. On social media, someone had listed their home address as the site of yard sales and sex parties. And then a book arrived at the Steiner's doorstep. It was about surviving the loss of a spouse and addressed to David. It was followed up a few short days later with a very expensive funeral wreath. At first, the police thought it might be coming from small town pranksters, so didn't take it very seriously. David installed more security systems and cameras at their home, and the couple began taking extra precautions, being more vigilant to see if they were being followed, changing their daily routines so as not to be too predictable and, when possible, staying away from the house. However, they couldn't afford to move house, and they didn't want to stay with friends and family so that their loved ones would not also become targets. In an interview with 60 Seconds, Ina Steiner recounts how she went to bed paralyzed with fear every night. And it wasn't made any easier by the fact that they had started sleeping in separate rooms. Their reason for doing this was so that at least one of them could either call the police or escape should someone break into their home. Their luck didn't turn around until one day David noticed a car following him. Despite his terror, he managed to get a photo of the license plate, and it was this single act that forced the police to start investigating their case more seriously. Assigned to the case was Detective John Haswell and Sergeant Jason Sutherland, who ran the license plate of the car that had been following David and it came back to a rental agency. 
they contacted the rental agency and got the name of the renter, Veronica Zia. This was the first significant lead so far, but there was a big problem. The Steiners didn't know anyone called Veronica Zia. Not wanting this to halt police investigations, the Steiners desperately tried to find any information they could about who this woman was. Their efforts revealed that Veronica Zia was an eBay employee. Sergeant Sutherland tracked the rental car to the Boston Ritz Carlton and called her from the hotel lobby. In an interview, Jason Sutherland said he fully expected her to come down to the hotel lobby, hand him her business card, and say something like, I'm from eBay and we're doing an investigation, which is why I drove by their house. But after receiving his phone call, she never came to meet him. She instead immediately escaped from the hotel using a different exit and left town without talking to police. On the other side of town, Detective Haswell had been chasing down another lead. He had learned the funeral wreath sent to the Steiners was bought with a gift card from a grocery store in Silicon Valley, not far from eBay headquarters. In fact, it was only eight miles away. With this information, he was able to petition the store for CCTV footage of who made the purchase, and it turned out to be Veronica Zia again. And this is the point at which the FBI took over the case. Ten months later, the U.S. attorney in Massachusetts, Andrew Welling, announced the indictments of employees and contractors from eBay. This indictment was the first time the Steiners were able to hear the full backstory of what caused their lives to turn into a living nightmare. It was in April of 2019 that eBay's then CEO, Devin Wang, shared a link to a post Ina had written about his annual pay. eBay's chief communications officer, Steve Weimer, wrote back saying, we are going to crush this lady. And about a month later, Wenning, the CEO of eBay, texted, take her down. Steve Weimer later texted eBay security director Jim Bao, I want to see ashes. As long as it takes, whatever it takes. Just a few days later, Jim set up a meeting with his security staff at eBay's California headquarters, posted a map of Natick on the wall so they could hatch plans to intimidate the Steiners in order to either reverse or at the very least remove the negative coverage from their website. This secretive group included people who worked for eBay's safety and security unit, two former cops and a former nanny. The group quickly became cult-like and they were determined to the point of obsession. They spent days discussing, strategizing, planning how to force the Steiners to comply with their demands. And it wasn't long before this toxic environment led to them spurring each other on, encouraging one another to do more depraved and horrific acts until things became more and more deranged and all sense of decency had left the group. Paul Florence was the chief executive of Concentric Advisors, which was the staffing agency responsible for supplying contractors to eBay. He recalls the event, saying that it felt like eBay was breaking the analysts down psychologically, making them doubt themselves, isolating them, turning them against each other. Also, pressure mounted when eBay began firing several analysts, so everyone in that group knew that their job could be on the line. But no one in the group was as eager and as motivated as one person by the name of Veronica Zia, who had her own motivations to go above and beyond in her intimidations of the Steiners. Like the other eBay analysts, Veronica was a contract worker and her ambition was to be hired by eBay itself. It was her responsibility to track persons of interest, individuals who might pose a danger to eBay and rank them in a threat matrix. The woman who shot three people at YouTube in April 2018 proved what could happen without sufficient precautions and security at a large tech company. In January 2019, the temperature in the global security and resiliency department went up even further. Elliott Management, a hedge fund considered merciless even by Wall Street standards, bought a chunk of eBay and asked for changes, including deep cuts to staff. Nobody was safe not even the chief executive, Devin Winning. The last thing Mr. Winning and other eBay executives needed when trying not to attract negative attention from the new hedge fund owners was outside criticism from a very popular and prominent blog already frequented by Wall Street insiders. 
this is where Veronica saw this as an opportunity to get the attention of the most powerful people. She reasoned that not only would she get a permanent eBay position, but perhaps a significant promotion to an executive position if she could show that she single-handedly fixed the Steiner headache. All pled guilty to stalking or cyber-stalking charges, Jimba was sentenced to five years in prison. Veronica Zia was sentenced to a year of home confinement and probation. But to date, eBay itself as an organization has not been charged with any crimes. This is despite the plan being hatched in a conference room at eBay's headquarters and the campaign of terror ultimately being paid for from eBay funds. Also, eBay's top executives, Devin Weining and Steve Weimer, were found to be completely innocent. Lelling says there was not enough evidence to file criminal charges against them. The only evidence against them were the incriminating messages, but unfortunately, these messages were deemed to be too vague as they never explicitly asked for specific acts of threat, stalking, or violence. From a legal perspective, things like take her down or I want to see ashes are not specific threats and could have had many legal interpretations. Steve Weimer was fired for cause by eBay and now runs the Boys and Girls Clubs of Silicon Valley. He has said his texts were mischaracterized and that he learned of the employee's conduct only after the fact. The former CEO Devin Weenig resigned from eBay in September of 2019 with a $57 million exit package. He said that he was appalled at what happened and had he been aware of it at the time, he would have stopped it. The Steiners have started a civil case against eBay and its former executives. This is a story of how the lives of innocent citizens were turned into a living nightmare orchestrated by a cult-like group within eBay, all because they published content the company executives didn't like. The sinister plot uncovered by the FBI led to guilty verdicts, probation, and prison time, yet the corporate giant itself remained unscathed.